guys today we are going to be mixing it up and as the title of this video says we're going to be talking about a holster that i've been running for a few months alongside some other holsters that you guys will be seeing in coming videos and what you guys have seen in everyday carry videos this is another holster that i've ran and kind of played with to see the functionality and differential between different multiple different holsters and the n82 tactical ambassador and before we get into this as always guys please do not forget to comment like like, share, and subscribe to see more awesome Alaskan content like this. As far as holsters go, I actually have quite a few for the 19 and even a few for the 21. And I think once I review all of them, I'm going to actually do a breakdown video kind of discussing inside, outside the waistband, shoulder rigs, whole bunch of different types of holsters that I've been running for my two Glocks and just kind of explaining different carry or reason why you might want to choose different types of carry for different reasons. So this video is not going to be that video, but that is going to be a video in the semi near future, a few months out. So anyways, now we're going to be digging into this little holster rig. This is, like I said, the N82 Tactical uh, Ambassador rig. And as you guys can see, this is a crossbreed rig. So you have leather on this. And so I believe this is actually a synthetic kind of leather, black synthetic leather on this side of the holster, but then it's a genuine leather on this side of the holster. <clears throat> you guys can see it's kind of a cream color. <clears throat> it does start off a little bit more cream colored than this, but it will get a naturally more tan as you carry it because obviously it's going to come in contact with the sweat and the oils of your body. So it'll become a little bit more tan like this over time. <clears throat> This one, of course, for shoulder, or for not for shoulder, not for shoulder, but for securement methods, it uses two different clips on it. So these two different clips sit on your belt at multiple different points. The thing I do like about this holster, aside from it being made in the US, is the fact that being a crossbreed, it does have quite a bit of flex to it. Now I do realize every crossbreed is a little bit different. Some uh, crossbreeds are a little bit thicker and they're more rigid, pla or uh, not plastic, but uh, leather. But this one tends to be a pretty pliable leather, so it's very easy to train it to where you like to carry it. You guys can see this one does have a little bit, naturally it starts out flat like this, but it does get trained a little bit over time, especially if you carry it every single day. Um, it does get trained over time to kind of bend to the area that you carry it. And once again, being that it is leather, you have some flexibility in where you can carry it on yourself. So if you like to carry it more on the hip, you can move it to there, have it more on the hip, or you can switch it, have it more contoured to the back side of your hip. So you guys can also see, uh, one, one thing I do like about this holster a lot is the fact that uh, due to its dual layer kind of uh, the way it's made or construction, uh, the, all these rivets and such and these different screw down areas and everything is not pronounced on this side at all. All of this is covered in leather and that is actually really nice and it creates a really supple and gentle feel to the holster when carrying it. And I have used this holster uh, for, for horseback riding in the past and that's a really good test of an inside the waistband holster because with horseback riding there's a lot of up and down jar movements and so if there's any kind of stick outs or protrusions that can dig into your side you'll notice it most evidently with a type of activity such as that but this one is very comfortable another thing I like about this holster unlike the other inside the waistband I'll be rolling in here soon is that this completely covers the gun so you guys can see the gun it is completely covered from this side so that means that when you have this holster on the back strap of this gun and the whole or the handle of this gun is not actually going to be digging into your side so you might notice that it might dig in a little bit on your side especially like if you get in a car or something like that but for the most part you'll notice that you're completely shielded from the gun as an entirety so you don't really have to worry about any part of the gun digging into your side or into your <clears throat> back at all so that is a really nice thing that I like it keeps your gun very isolated from you in that way so so it's still inside the waistband and close to you, but it's isolated in the fact that it's completely covered. Now I will say that does kind of come with the disadvantage that as you guys can tell, this holster, especially without a gun in it, this holster is very big. You guys can see it's, it's quite large. And one of the biggest downsides I have to this holster is the fact that it is a 
it's a very hard to put on holster because you have to put on this much uh, holster on you so it's a little bit overbearing but or a little bit overwhelming but once you get the holster actually on you and set up and on your belt um, it, it locks in really firmly with these clips and it sits really anchored to your body and you don't really notice the largeness especially like I said once you put a gun in it it makes the size seem a lot less uh, large than it really is because once again the handle is fully covered and everything looks a lot better the next thing I really enjoy about this holster or is it's a pro and a con for me I th I take it more as a pro and less as a con but this holster if you guys have noticed especially I've been having to do kind of like this like I have to use the uh, frame of the holster here this has a very 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 tight retention it's quite uh, it's quite <clears throat> it's quite challenging at times to actually pull the handgun out. You really have to meaningfully pull the gun out. Another thing that you'll notice because this holster is full or it covers the handle too, one of the downsides to having the handle covered is when you actually go, and you guys will just have to <clears throat> believe what I say here about <clears throat> about drawing this gun out because I don't have it on my side here, but you, you will have to believe me on this, but when it's on your side it's just as hard as this but since you can't actually really wrap your hands that effectively around the gun you kind of have to put your thumb up here at the top of the holster so if i can show you guys here hopefully you guys can kind of see best here so generally what you do is you put your thumb at the top of the holster and then you kind of just pull you kind of use that to pull the gun out and so generally I've had my best success with that because you really cannot get under the gun. You can, but it is quite challenging to get under the gun. And when you get under the gun, you kind of tension the gun like this to the holster. So it becomes, as you guys can see there, it becomes really hard to draw the handgun out. So that's my b biggest like pro and con of it. The reason why I like this is hearkening back to horseback riding and more strenuous kinds of activities. I've never had a worry or a question about this holster coming out or sorry this holster this handgun coming out of this holster i've never had a worry about that it's never been an issue for me and i know that it's really securely in place and so that if i do need to draw it i have to draw it meaningfully and make sure that i know i'm going to actually draw the gun but at the same time it's not going to accidentally rattle out of this spot at all and so that is something that i do really like about it but once again, if you are one of those people that doesn't like it, at times it can be really hard. You know, you can't just like crank this gun out, especially even more so when it's on your body because right now the back end of this leather is not being supported. And since this is half of the tension on the gun, when this is actually against your body, it press, it, there's more like a pressure like this. So it's a little bit harder to draw. So that is a thing that can be really hard. And once again, it's a big training curve and I'm rolling in some shooting footage uh, to kind of show you guys how hard it is to actually draw it out of its holster. That, that is kind of a positive or a negative, take it how you will. Uh, overall, I really do like this holster. It's an extremely comfortable holster. It's really good for carrying a gun every single day. I've had absolutely no issues with it. And once again, <clears throat> I'd, I would take a larger issue with the heavy tension if I knew I was going to be drawing the gun more or if I was gonna be drawing the gun frequently. Don't do that because that makes noise. But <clears throat> if I was going to be drawing the gun frequently or if I was trying to do some kind of tactical shooting course, I probably wouldn't select this holster. But since it is an everyday carry holster, uh, the probability of me actually pulling this gun out <clears throat> the probability of me actually pulling this gun out is very low and so i would rather have a very strong retention that can handle a lot of daily rigors more than a easily drawable so other than that another nice feature to it is if you do want to carry it in any kind of dynamic way you can just spin these off or you can use the allen keys here this does this holster does come with the allen keys to remove these and what you can do is sorry for the inclement snow but you can uh, use those allen keys and move it to any of these three positions i think you guys can see here there's three different positions depending on the ride height you want and the angle of carry you want you can see this one's on the second of these screws and then this one's on the first or the third however you want to call it and that kind of helps angle it when it's actually on the belt to sit more at an angle like this 
at an angle like this. Sorry, it's a little bit hard to show. There's so much here, but it helps it sit better on my hips personally or on my side. So <clears throat> that's how I have it currently set up, but it's very easy to change. So guys, hope you enjoyed that quick look at the N82 Tactical Ambassador holster for the Glock 19. Uh, definitely go, I'll have a link in the description where you can go check this out. If this holster seems like an interesting holster to you guys. Anyways, that's all for now. God bless, and I'm out.